Hey guys, I'm so excited. I am on my way to see a van. And it's not just any van, but it is almost the van of my dreams. Now, if you've been watching these videos before, you'll know that I am not interested in a camper van. I am interested in getting just a plain van and doing a no-build build. So, um, this is a 2500 Promaster. I'd rather have 3500, even though I'm not putting a lot of furniture or heavy wood or anything into it. Um, it is a long and tall, um, so it's the extended wheelbase and it's a high top. Um, it's used and it's not a very good price, but I'm going to check it out anyway just to see. I mean, I can afford it, but um, just to see, get a sense of the space. And I brought some measurements with me for the things that I do want to bring for my sticks and bricks. And then, um, you know, get a sense of if I could do yoga inside of it, because that's a requirement for me um, on rainy days when I'm not going to be outside. I want to be able to do yoga inside. So come along with me as I look at this van today. Hey guys, no matter what you're doing, enjoy the journey. Even if that means enjoy chores, enjoy work. Find the one thing that you can enjoy about something, like washing dishes for instance. Enjoy the feel of the warm water on your hands, the lovely fragrance of the dishwashing soap. Right? There's always something to enjoy if you slow down and take the time to be present. I think a lot of people are very unhappy primarily and only because they're not present, they're rushing, they want to get to the next good thing, and then when they get to that next good thing, it's a letdown, a slight disappointment. It didn't fulfill everything that they hoped it would. We can have that complete fulfillment, that complete contentment, that complete acceptance, that complete gratitude, if we just slow down and become present in our bodies. There's a cop on the side of the road. <laughs> oh, let's see if I get a ticket. <laughs> you can always find something to be grateful for, even in the depths of despair and sorrow and grief, losing someone. Ultimately though, I think hopefully people come out of that with gratitude, not for the loss, but for the time they had. I think this is the secret to life, love and contentment. And I've had depression, I've had grief, I've had loss, I've had trauma. It's, however, number one, you have to believe that you can get to that place of gratitude and contentment. You have to believe it or you'll never get there. Number two, it takes practice to get there and it might take years. It took me 57 years to be exact, probably more like 54, 55, but it took that long. And it took me being introduced to other people who uh, wrote books or did talks about the subject for me to really understand it. It really wasn't a concept that I even paid attention to when I was much younger. And maybe it takes the weariness and the almost being tired of life uh, and being in that depressed state in order to pay attention and hear what the gurus or the philosophers or the people who are giving out freely, giving out the advice on how to get this contentment. Maybe it takes being in one of your low states um, in your life in order to be even able to comprehend what they're saying. If you practice gratitude first thing in the morning, before you do anything, when you wake up, if you can think to yourself, what am I grateful for right now or today or in my life? And you just think about those things, it's going to change your life. It did mine.
At this point, I thought I had the camera rolling when I looked at the interior of the van. Unfortunately, it was the exact opposite. I must have had the camera rolling and then absentmindedly clicked on the shutter button again and actually turned it off. All you can see is me swinging my arm around wildly with the camera in my hand. So I don't have any pictures of the interior for you. What I can tell you though, is that it seemed really small. I don't know how to explain this, but it actually seemed smaller than my Honda CRV. I feel very cozy and very comfortable in my Honda CRV when I'm camping in it or out of it. However, when I took a tape measure to the interior of the van, measured out where my bed would be and where the one dresser would be, I realized that it would seem extremely close and claustrophobic. Even though I was able to extend my arm up to the ceiling, I had about a foot uh, above me. I'm 5'3", and I would imagine it's six feet tall, so it's a little less than a foot above me. I can touch the ceiling with my arm bent. Well, I test drove it, as you heard. Um, I didn't feel, I couldn't set up my tripod in the dashboard and record where I was driving, but it was very easy to drive. It felt almost like a car, felt heavier, but did not feel, it was easy to maneuver. Um, you know, you could take corners just like in a car. I did go a little wider in my turns um, than I, probably would if I owned it only because it's not my van and I didn't want to crash it. Um, but yeah, it, it felt pretty good to drive. It, he said it was front wheel drive, but I kind of want a front wheel drive because I don't think that I would put a lot of heavy stuff in it. It was a lot smaller on the inside than I thought. And that might be a problem. I measured my bed and I measured this one dresser that I plan to bring with me. Um, and it's going to be kind of like a countertop, um, and it would fit in there and it would barely stick out beyond one of the double doors just by a couple of inches. Um, so that's good because I want access to both doors, um, and I don't want a cluttered space. And could I do yoga in there? Yeah, I could with a bed in there, but I'd have to cut down my bed. Um, it's not as long as my bed, you know, the width, I wanna put the bed in the back and the width of the van would not allow me to put my bed sideways, side to side in the back. So I'd have to cut down my bed. Um, and it's not very tall. I can reach up and hit the ceiling. And I really thought that was a medium roof and that the high top would be, have a lot more clearance. But I think I'm thinking of the Sprinter. I think the Sprinter is a lot different um, there's a 170 Sprinter here and it looks a lot longer. Um, I'm just not sure though that I would want to drive something longer than what I drove today. That was very comfortable. I'm not sure if the 170 would be harder to drive. So anyway, that was my experience looking at a van today. It was a ProMaster 2500. Um, I think he said it was a 168 which is their long and a high top, um, which was probably, I would guess six feet tall. So my son wouldn't be able to stand in it. But yeah, that was my experience today looking at my first ProMaster, my first van. I'm not gonna purchase it. So I'm not starting van life today, that's for sure. But it was fun to go and look at it and get an idea of the living space. So for now, take care. We'll continue to do adventures in my Honda CRV. Got an adventure coming up in February that I will record and take care and be well, everybody. Bye.